And they say Toothless is the best dragon ever. Shish! They're wrong, brother. Draco is the best dragon. He even has a Sean Connery voice. That's how badass he is. Too bad he had to die. By my heart, he lives forever. Yeah, he lives. You know, I always like dragons. I mean, these ferocious flying beasts. The bees that can destroy the whole villages, and they're fearsome. They're never afraid of anything, unless there's something bigger than they are. And that's mostly the case in fantasy worlds. Like, a uh, protagonist being a um, <laughs> human who is supposed to kill them. Yeah, whoop de doo that, that happens. But I mean, I always like dragons, they're amazing creatures. They're the same. Amazing level for me, like any dinosaur. Well, mostly like Torrens or Rex. About this level. But uh, I watched many films about dinosaurs, I watched many films about dragons. I always enjoyed it. But mostly I enjoyed the movies and games with dragons where they're actually being friendly, where they're actually being. Um, allies to humans. That's always a nice touch, that's always something interesting to see. You wonder how can um, a human and a dragon cooperate with each other and actually try to save the world. Well, this happens sometimes. Not very often, but it happens. I can't remember much actually from movies. There was this Rain of Fire movie, I think. It had uh, Tom Cruise fighting one dragon or two dragons, I, I don't remember, but they managed to kill one dragon by the end of the movie. <laughs> Very old movie, I can't remember. And, uh, well, there's obviously enough Dungeons and Dragons games. Well, obviously they're about dragons, but I've never seen their actual being friendly dragons. So, that's about it. I can't remember much. But there is one game I know by heart, and I hold it deeply which I adore and I think many of you guys played a long time ago. Let's go back to the 90s. My favorite time of, favorite time of gaming. Times were rough. You never knew what game was coming out. You always go to a random store and BAM! There's Mario. BAM! There's Spider-Man 1 PlayStation 1. BAM! There's something else. Yeah, <laughs> there were some good games. Times were rough, but at the same time they were good, quoting Jantron. It was the age of mystery, how he liked to call it. And I kinda agree with that guy. It was age of mystery. There were of course magazines to buy and actually to figure out what new games were coming out, like Nintendo Power or maybe PC Gamer. Yeah, those were the times when you actually had to buy a magazine because there were no internet like nowadays. But I digress. Like I said there was this game about dragons. And uh, it's really a masterpiece, I must say. It was released in 1999 in, on July 14th. It was called Drakan. Or Drakan. I uh, really have no idea. I, till this day, I have no idea how it's rightly pronounced. So it, let's say it's Drakan the Order of the Flame. And it's quite an amazing experience, I must say. I played a lot of it back when I was young. It was exclusive for PC. No PlayStation 1, nothing else, because, well, <laughs> what, what can you do? PC back then in the 90s was a main platform for gaming. Obviously enough, you played uh, maybe Nintendo or Super Nintendo, and there were Sega, Dreamcast, and other consoles at the same time. But. Uh, PC, I want, I want to say that PC was the main platform back then, not like uh, consoles nowadays, the console is the main power, it's a horsepower of every game nowadays. No, back then PC ruled the world. And I kinda happy for that time. But anyway, Dragon the Order of the Flame, what's all about? 
developed by Surreal Software in 1999. The later guys which will make such amazing games like The Suffering and they'll later merge with Monolith Production, the same guys which made really amazing games like No One Lives Forever and uh, right now they're making their newest game Middle Earth Shadow of Murder. Yeah. It's a match made in hell, like some some can say. But I digress again. Dragon the Order of the Flame. It had only one sequel, but uh, I'll talk about sequel later. Right now I want to talk about the very first game. The one which is really amazing and I adore it very much. So let's dive in, shall we? So because I don't have any more original disc, I had to download it. It took some time, but I finally managed it. It's so hilarious, actually. I managed to run it on Windows 7 and Windows 8. <laughs> Technology. Bullshit. But if you're like me, you remember this sweet intro to the game and very cool music. I must say, Dragon had it a lot. I just feel nostalgia running through my veins right now. Well, same thing goes with any 90s game from my childhood. And this is one of those prime examples. This is my childhood. I play a lot so, a lot of times. And I never regret it. It's just that awesome. But obviously enough, like any 90s game, the Control scheme is quite a mishap because everybody used arrows on keyboard instead of WASD to walk around. So if you want to play this game like a pro gamer nowadays, you have to do some key bindings. But when you're done, just pick up your settings, all the stuff, and we're ready to go. But because it's not a disc, it's a dollar version, there were some problems like uh, game didn't run on current uh, OS, so, you had, so I had to find some patches and some other stuff to make it work. And uh, yeah, it's not that hard, just take some time. Well, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go on easy. Don't worry, I'm not a pussy, just doing it right now for, for you guys. So in short, what's Drag and the Order of the Flame all about? What's the genre? It's an action-adventure genre with little, little, little RPG elements. Basically, there are no RPG, I must say, just uh, adventure and walking around, killing everybody and doing some side quests. But you don't earn any XP, there is no such thing as experience. You can actually wield any weapon, any bow, you want any armor so yeah that's uh, maybe the first kind or maybe not but still just you don't need any experience <laughs> to do some stuff what you do actually level up is um, well not level up but you actually acquire new new ability is uh, when you ride uh, Arak and um, in some cases, in some places, you'll find some big, like, uh, pistols or something, they come from the ground. And you have to do some endurance tests to kill everybody. And when you do, you can, you're going to the crystal and you get a new ability 
first obviously he has it's a fire bread, fireballs, and there are actually another ones like ice bread, uh, toxic bread, and many others. So your dragon is also gonna be armed to the seas, as I can say. It's a really nice touch, I must say. The game is really well made. There are of course some problems and maybe some inconsistencies. Like, um, the story about the game is that if what's going on right now is that uh, some bad dudes, warthogs, uh, some animals, they attack the village of our protagonist, Rin, and uh, they kill some people and others are enslaved, and also they uh, kidnap her little brother, Leon. And uh, when she finds out what's, what all happened, it's kind of strange that she just decides to go after them and actually save her brother, but she never talks about saving the villagers, she, she never talks about, um, <laughs> yes, saving the world, she just wants to save her brother. I know it's kind of a very heroic thing to do, saving a family, but uh, there is actually a war going on, there is actually bad guys here trying to kill everybody and you're going after them just to save one one guy, one your little brother. That's pretty great, I must say. But alright. I think she can make it out with her amazing butt. Or sword fighting skills. Yeah, sword fighting. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, the gameplay goes like this, you walk around, find loot, find potions, different weapons, and kill babies. The fighting system is clunky, but quite alright. There's no such thing as parry or block, but you can actually put a block, but it doesn't do that much. It, you still get hit, you still get damage, but not such a big amount. And, um, like I said, there's no parry system, so basically, if you don't want to get hit at all, you're gonna run around circles around your enemy and constantly hitting him. So, you're doing this pussy out fighting maneuver on him. And that's not fun. But, uh, I must say, it's clearly the only way to survive in this game if you're even playing on the very hardest difficulty. Yep. That's about it. Hit, get back, hit, get back. That's uh, that's probably how all games in the 90s went. <laughs> if you had only sword to fight. If you have a gun, you're just gonna shoot them. But yes, like I said, there are bows and you can use them to fight enemies from far and uh, yeah they're not gonna hit you but uh, you obviously know that uh, flying on dragon arrow is a really satisfying thing you can do dog fighting you can basically that's it uh, whenever you fly on the arrow there'll be there'll be of course some enemies that can shoot at you the melee enemies won't do a thing, they'll just run away from you and you can just burn them to the ground. That's the best thing about this game, burning everybody because you have a fire breathing dragon. That's the whole point of this game. But uh, there will be times when you'll see other flying creatures, they'll all also be able to hit you. So you'll enter into this dogfight scene. Well, not scene, just you'll be dogfighting with them. And uh, yes. That's pretty much it. You either survive or you die. And at times you'll be separated from your Eric. So he'll be at point A and you're going to point B all alone without his help. You start to actually to miss him, you actually start to miss this guy because he's so much fun. I mean I mean so Red Dragon, how you cannot love this guy? He's amazing. Maybe he doesn't have that much of a sense of humor or anything, but he's still a fire breathing dragon. That's the best part about him. 
You know what else uh, reminds me of this girl? Rin. Uh, she actually reminded me the very first time when I played it. She actually reminded me another girl who can sword fight. Very cool, I must say. Very cool. She even kicked uh, Hercules' ass. You know what I'm talking about? Zena, Zena Warrior Princess is one of the best shows, TV shows I ever watched, and uh, I adore it. I really like it. I know it's uh, funny sometimes and stupid, but still, we had a lot of stupid stuff to watch and very cool adventure and all stuff. And when I first saw the game and I watched the cinematic opening, I thought to myself, wow, I'm playing as Zena. That's pretty cool. The only thing missing is Chakram and... Yeah, she controls at the base and killing everybody and then goes back to her. Yeah, that would be cool, but <laughs> too bad it's not the case. Although there is a... <clears throat> Xena Warrior Princess game on PlayStation 1, but I never played it. So what do we have here right now is that the old guy tells you what to do. You, you go to his house, find a book, kill some baddies that are waiting you outside, kill some spiders in the case, get to the church, put the book on the PSL, read another book, go downstairs, try to avoid Chandeliers that can kill you. Yep, that's about it. We have some puzzle solving and other shit like um, Prince of Persia. Hey, <laughs> hey! Find a soul crystal, go downstairs, go upstairs, walk around the uh, rope bridge. Don't worry, it, don't, it doesn't fall. Kill another base, kill some spiders, find some good loot. Try to survive, don't get killed by Indiana Jones rolling ball. Yeah, I said it. Indiana Jones rolling ball. It's super effective. Kill more spiders, kill more goblins and demons and I don't know. Find a good loot, find an armor finally. And... Here's a finish line. The cave of your boyfriend. Yep. Your future boyfriend is waiting for you down down there. I know, boyfriend is a really <laughs> not the right thing to do, but uh, <laughs> I like it. Hey, I'm an artist. But before you go to your boyfriend in his cave, you have to survive some obstacles because, you know, what a great adventure game without some puzzles and uh, some obstacles to get away. I mean, we have some falling ground, you can just fall to your death. You, we have some traps like in Prince of Persia. Yeah. And then you go down the staircase, you put the crystal and voila, your boyfriend is here. Call me Rin. Oh, Theria 
upstart? Where did you get that cursed stone? No need to get your scales in a twist. I'm not your enemy, you know. You see, Adamar sent me. He said something about the Order of the Flame. The Order? How presumptuous! What makes you think you're worthy? Why have you awakened me? <sighs> you see, my brother was captured in a war talk raid. What? You awakened me, Erok? Bonded dragon of Heron? Defeater of the Dark Union and saver of all dragon? For that? Listen here, you wretched reptile! That's the life of my brother you're talking about! Hmm. Very well, Rin. I will listen. Yes, but will you help me, Arok? I do not have much choice. You brought my soul crystal. If you choose to bond with me, it will be done. So, what do we have to do to bond? Ah, a bonding moment. Well, you know, some bonds can be just friendship. But some other bonds, they actually mean some... Well, you know, a little together time. I really looking forward to see how this girl and this dragon gonna... FUCK YOU GUYS! They just do voodoo magic shit and now they're bound together. Oh, no, that's okay, that's okay. I... I didn't expect that, that actually he'll put her... Let's get going. He'll... Yeah. I'm just gonna shut up right now. And here comes the most interesting part, the second level, where you finally are together. You can fly around, kill everybody you want, go down, discover something new, find some new loot, and etc, etc, the list goes on. And in times you're gonna do some optional side quests, which can actually help you a lot. Well, finding some new loot, obviously enough, and progressing the story. But at times, this big world is so big, I kinda sometimes don't know where to go. I mean, there is a map, you can use it and uh, they actually tell you what to do. There are some things that are shown on the map where they actually tell you, you must go there, you must do this, but sometimes I... I really don't know. I mean, I spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out how to open the gates while I was supposed to go on a hill and find the cave entrance, which leads you to, which leads you inside to that uh, gate, so you can open it from the inside. Well, bravo! I must say, I'm really surprised by that. I mean, <laughs> instead of just having some random door near or having a cave actually near... No, I'm supposed to go up, up, very up in the hill and find a little, little scratch, scratch in the mountain to see there's actually... Oh, there's a fucking entrance to the cave! Yeah! <laughs> spend a lot of time actually even now when I play it again I don't know I mean I really don't know it was really tough for me I was really scratching my head back then but anyway is there anything else well about weapons and stuff yes there is they actually can be destroyed there is a durability for your weapons if it's destroyed, it's done. It's gone, there's nothing more. Actually, they give you from the very beginning this soul which can be destroyed, but it doesn't do that much damage. But I don't uh, advise you to throw it away, no. Keep it. Keep the sword, but uh, collect other loot. I mean, what? You're gonna spend all your swords, all your weapons, and you'll be. Uh, Left with nothing. You can fight bare hands in this game. 
So I really advise you to don't uh, throw away your sword. Another thing that really bugs me is that this ring can't climb at all. She can do somersaults and all the other stuff, but uh, I mean, such an easy thing that just to hang on the ledge and climb up, is it that, that such a hard thing? But because if it's not here, I mean, if you're doing a very important jump in your life you, and you fuck up, you're fucked up. You're gonna die to you, you're gonna fall to your death or something else. I mean, if they only added this ability to hang on the ledges, that'll be really useful. The main question, of course, you are gonna ask me, did I ever finish this game? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't know, can't remember. I never was such a pro gamer back then. I was still a noob and I couldn't complete many games in my lifetime. I only managed to complete them when I came back later, in many years later. So, uh, if I never finished it back then, maybe it's my another chance to try again. I mean, Dracon is a very awesome game. It, it's gonna be a shame if I never complete. So in the end, all I can say is that this game is really awesome. It's a really good game, and uh, I think it's um, maybe like a what? Goodbye present for all of us because it was released in '99 and. It was six months before um, we, with open hands, accepted 21st century. Yeah, 2000. It was about to start. And this game was like a goodbye present for us. And I'm really glad. It was a really good game. It still is. And like I said, there is a sequel. But I didn't play it that much. Maybe I didn't like it. Maybe it was too big for me. I mean, it was released on PlayStation 2. Exclusive. It was released three years later, in 2002. I don't know. Maybe I'll go back to it as well. Or maybe I won't. Don't know yet. What I do know is that I had lots of fun with this game. And I hope you guys will have much fun with it as well. So, if you can find it in retail stores, just download it. Because if you officially own it sometime, there is no crime in downloading it for free. That's what I always told. Well, that's all I can say, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for taking me so long. Still have lots of things to do later, but hope you enjoy, hope you liked. Please subscribe, comment, rate, whatever you like to do, and uh, talk to me if you need more information. And uh, yeah, play good games, play very good games, especially from the 90s. They're a blast. And now, 